You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. The World at Eight, the number one in nationalist news. Highlights of the news today, Friday the 12th of July 2013. 53% of Muslim men don't work. Infidels support them. Over half a million more EU immigrants arrived in the UK under Labour than originally reported. Five schoolboys, 13 and under, have been arrested for the rape of a 12-year-old girl. 80,000 Bulgarians plan to move to Britain. Nick Griffin, MEP from the Belly of the Beast. Russian Supreme Court upholds ban on Muslim headwear in schools. Saudi princess accused of keeping a slave in California. Thought for the day, am I the only one simmering? And finally, a slippery situation. UK News. 53% of Muslim men don't work. Infidels support them. Pam Geller of Atlas Shrugs does her research and credit where it's due. She writes, 53% of Muslim men are depending upon the kafar. It's the jizya, it's the duty of non-Muslim to pay for the upkeep of the non-Muslim. Muslim economic activity in the UK, Islam versus Europe. Politicians constantly argue that immigration brings economic benefits. Even if that were true in general, it is clear that Muslim immigration does not. Here are links to a few relevant sources of information on the subject. Migration Watch reports that For example, compared with the UK average of 22% of the working age population being economically inactive, Somali, Bangladeshi, Pakistani and Iranian immigrants are likely to be 81%, 56%, 55% and 48% economically inactive, respectively. The Daily Mail has a similar report. These figures come from the Institute for Public Policy report, Britain's Immigrants and Economic Profile, which can be downloaded for free. According to the document briefing on British Muslims' socio-economic data and attitudes, more than half of all Muslims are economically inactive, 52%. The Equalities Commission, How Fair is Britain, published in early 2011, contains some interesting observations about Muslim unemployment levels in the UK. In the UK, only 47% of Muslim men and 24% of Muslim women are employed. The WikiLeaks cables also contain some interesting revelations about the level of disability amongst Muslims in Britain. Muslims were also found to have the highest disability rates, with 24% of men and 21% of women claiming a disability. While the cable also cited statistics claiming Muslims were also the most likely group to be unavailable for work, or not actively seeking employment due to illness, their studies, or family commitments. The original source for this information seemed seemed to have been this page on the Office of National Statistics website. It notes that Muslim males and females in Great Britain had the highest rates of reported ill health in 2001. Unsurprisingly, the Muslim-friendly Guardian, although at the forefront of the WikiLeaks revelations, did not see fit to print this one, although the Daily Mail did. You can find the article on Pam's Atlas Shrugs blog. Over half a million more EU immigrants arrived in the UK under Labour than originally reported. Half a million more immigrants arrived in Britain from the European Union than was previously believed, campaigners have warned. It means immigration between mid-1997 and mid-2010, while Labour was in power, now totals nearly 4 million, rather than the 3.4 million recorded. The number of people who went under the radar would have filled a city the size of Manchester. The Office for National Statistics discovered the mistake in May when they compared the results of the 2000 census with the population they had expected to find on the basis of births, deaths and official immigration figures, Migration Watch UK said. World Date comments, they probably have filled a city the size of Manchester. Manchester itself. Five schoolboys, 13 and under, arrested for rape of 12-year-old girl. Five schoolboys, aged 12 and 13, have been arrested over the alleged rape of a 12-year-old girl. The boys have all been bailed over the alleged assault, which is said to have taken place on the Field Lane estate in Rastrick, West Yorkshire, last Friday. Police have increased patrols on the estate and have contacted local schools to make them aware of the allegation. World Date says... 
This is what happens with the leftist sex education and promotion of promiscuity in the UK. European news. 80,000 Bulgarians plan to move to Britain. As many as 80,000 Bulgarians could move to Britain when new EU rules come into force in less than six months. It emerged today. A new survey has revealed that nearly 20% of 15 to 55-year-olds, around 400,000, want to escape their struggling country with the UK at the top of their list. World at eight states. The media steer clear of the millions of Asians and Africans already here, but of course they are non-white and more acceptable to the establishment. This lot of Eastern Europeans will just be the icing on the already rotting cake. The World Today and Radio Britain apologise for the lack of Euro input from our Nick Griffin MEP today, but Nick is attending the funeral of Lee Rigby. Thank you very much. World News. Russian Supreme Court upholds ban on Muslim headwear in schools. A branch of Russia's Supreme Court has rejected an appeal by a group of Muslims for the right of schoolgirls to wear the traditional religious attire, specifically the hijab, in classrooms. The appeal was made by a group of citizens of Muslim faith from southern Russia's Stavropol region. They complained that a decree by the local administration ordering all school children to appear in classes only in regular secular clothes, which came into force in January this year, infringes their freedom of faith, as guaranteed by the Constitution. Saudi Princess Accused of Keeping a Slave in California Saudi Princess Mashail Alabayan, 42, to be freed on $5 million bail, must wear a GPS tracking device. She was charged on Wednesday in California with human trafficking for allegedly holding a domestic worker against her will. If convicted, she faces up to 12 years in prison. Her alleged victim, a 30-year-old Kenyan woman, escaped and then flagged down a bus to seek help. World Today comments, she won't be convicted because she's just following her religion. Thought for the day, am I the only one simmering? Am I the only one simmering, not with the heat, which, although very welcome, is becoming too much for me, and I find myself cowering when able under the huge umbrella in the garden, instead of doing Tai Chi in the sun. But no, it isn't the wonderful heat wave that's getting me all steamed up. It is once again the sodding media in this country. I watched on ITV the sad parade of our military boys through Lee Rigby's hometown when they carried his body to the church in Middleton, Greater Manchester, yesterday. And at least the Sun did print the fact that two men had been arrested for his murder, whereas the newscaster last night just said, and I quote a shortened form, Lee Rigby, a man who expected to die in foreign lands for his country, but was killed in Woolwich whilst returning to his barracks. No mention of the two Muslim bastards that hacked off his head after running him over with their car. Oh no, they're both safely tucked away in government speak for the sheeples. In fact, one newspaper article appeared to be an advert for a fun day and a bicycle race to remember someone else. Surely it isn't just me or my party who must wonder why, for God's sake, it is that when any crime includes or is participated in or perpetrated by people of the Islamic faith, do the media appear to have a complete ban on actually telling the truth? Could it be that they use the excuse widely used by the establishment in the last five years of us nationalists described as having far-right or extreme-right or, perish the thought, racist views, and that we would use it in some way to cause a fractionalisation of the various diverse communities that house these Muslims. When in truth, facts are facts, and if some of the following situations were reversed, alias white on black or Christian or Muslim, the media would and do love it. We have all learnt the lesson of Lawrence, beloved of the Liberal Brigade, who in fact was nothing more than a black lout with a penchant for drugs. This doesn't excuse his murder, but in the light of many worse ethnic or non-ethnic crimes, Lawrence's pales in the light of the ever-present media showcase it has come to represent. Will poor Lees ever reach these dizzying heights? Certainly not, while our government shut down the media with threats of religion, religious discrimination and fear of reprisals against the wonderful Islamic community that reside like parasites on an unwilling host. Circling around the Reb and now in some papers is the alleged rape of a 12-year-old girl in Rastrick near Brighouse, West Yorkshire. The, three, the boys, 3 aged 13 and 2 aged 12, have not been named and have been bailed. The child was apparently raped last Friday at a house where one of the boys lives by all five. 
The unwillingness of the media to name and shame is odd, and in the express the posed handcuffs' hands were, of course, white ones. We can just wait and see what transpires with this case, if indeed it ever does. The area isn't too far from Keithley, where ten years ago Anne Pryor and Nick Griffin raised the alarm on the Asian sex gangs, which turned out to be Muslim groomings, and which, apart from a flurry of convictions in the last two years, has conveniently died the publicity death yet again. The local police are well acquainted with the goings-on in these communities, but have been told to shut up about it, form a sort of a group to highlight and search for missing underage females, but keep the whole thing under wraps for the sake of their pensions and peace in their areas. Take Stuart Hall, or rather don't take him, the octogenarian who has been found guilty of sexual abuse in the 60s, he's now 83 for God's sake, and several of the women were 16 at the time, which in the UK is the age of consent, which of course didn't give him the right to do what he apparently did do, but I find these abuse crimes slightly more palatable than the definitely underage girls being abused right now and here in the UK by foreigners who will never pay the penalty. And moreover, neither will their families or their money, cars and houses be taken from them to pay their victims for their trauma. All very unfair. Laws should apply to all in the country, not a selected few indigenous males. Lurching on in the media hate campaign is the article on foxes in London. Soon it will be open season to kill these poor animals just for fun. After all, you cannot eat foxes, or you can bet our immigrants would have done so, as they are doing to the queen swans up and down the country. If you see a mangy thin fox, be real. The animal is hungry. That thing that few of us in the UK are, and that is starving hungry. Animals, whether they be small or large, are becoming hungry because we, humans, are taking their homes and their sources of food away from them, and it is disgusting. If you see a hungry fox, bloody feed it. Give it some leftover food that goes in your bins. You won't miss it, and it will prevent the fox coming into the house if you leave a bowl at the far end of a garden or yard. I did this for years in Surrey, and I had cats, and none of which were ever attacked. In fact, I have a picture of our one vixen sitting on a swing with our cat below it. I fed the badgers as well, and there was never any trouble. Just imagine you were a fox, your home was crap, your food had gone, and there were just house upon house where you used to roam, all open, with food smells and small wriggly children and furry animals available. Wonderful. Humans should use what excess brains they have when it comes to nature. You can live harmoniously with foxes, just don't leave your houses open and don't keep chickens in unsafe coops. But of course the media goes all out, as they do, with the poor dogs who are driven to attack because they're frightened, frustrated and hungry. Blame the owners, not the animals. They're the ones who have acknowledged brain power, but I really do wonder. Coached in PC terms is an article on immigrant mothers fueling the baby boom, when in fact it is immigrant mothers who are the baby boom. Blame our NHS and the government's willingness to pay for all the results of immigrant ruttings. They publicise the fact that there are more mothers over 40 than teens, which is a fallacy. Apparently, the official stats on immigrant births is nearly 800,000 were born in 2012, compared to just over 700,000 in 2011. Oh, great. And the government want to cap immigration sometime in the future? Read between the lines. And the mantra is no. We need immigrants to work for us and pay taxes and look after our growing elderly population. Bollocks! None of that applies even in the ether of time. It simply won't run any more, and the public must be sick and tired of hearing the PC speak around a situation which is getting much worse, not much better. They're feeling this in Fulmer Bucks, which is a charming little village, but appears to have been taken over by, yup, a ranting Muslim cleric. The very toned-down report was in the Mail Saturday, and the cleric is Sheikh Yassar al-Habib, who fronted a fund-raising campaign that raised £2 million to buy a spacious hall on the outskirts of that village, which has now been renamed the al Muhasin Mosque, and every Saturday it plays host to hundreds of Habib's followers. So no more cricket on the village green or drinkies at the local pub, but hordes of mercs and BMWs parked everywhere, and the Islamic rhetoric. Habib is a Shia Muslim and, of course, brings his hatred of the Sunnis into Buckinghamshire's best-kept village. A Muslim Labour MP, a Khalid Mahmood, said, 
If it was EDL or BMP using this sort of rhetoric, the authorities would quite rightly be on them like a ton of bricks. But because he is a Muslim, they don't. And probably Mahmoud, he is a Shia, and I would like to bet you are a Sunni. And as the rightly coming down on nationalist parties for stating the obvious in their own country, you can pack your bags and sod off now with Habib. The fact is that what Habib is doing is being done all over the UK. Most, if not all, the home counties, small and up to now highly desirable places to live, are being taken over by Muslims, with huge backing from Islamic groups outside the UK. They are taking over prime territory, arable land and unenriched areas very quickly. And with pals on local councils, there is nothing the common people can do except witter away amongst themselves online. The media do a half job. They tell us the problem is not the solution because they're not allowed to. And every media journalist, if he wants a job of any status at all, has to sign a pledge to say they will not issue any statement to the public which enhances or portrays nationalist or racist or religious views. So that, in a sentence, obliterates any sort of fair portrayal our own indigenous people might have in the media. All sewn up and silent. It's very simmering, isn't it? A thought for this weekend is, nobody made a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. Edmund Burke. And finally, a slippery situation. Post office shut down by packing leaking KY gel reported by UPI. The Guntersville post office in the US evacuated after package leaked unknown chemical that turned out to be KY gel. The hazmat team found 12 to 15 packages covered in the substance. Three employees were treated after coming into contact with the unknown chemical, which was originally believed to contain methanol. Investigators later discovered the source of the ooze was a bottle of KY Intense Arousal Gel, which spokesman Tony Robinson said contains ingredients used to intensify sensation. Postal officials didn't say exactly where the package of personal lubricant was headed, but said it was sent to someone in the entertainment industry. Robinson said they will follow their usual policy and contact the sender with friendly advice on how to better secure their packages to prevent future incidents. This presenter says, words fail me. Why not buy it at a local chemist or is the guy or girl too famous to be seen? You've been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart and I am the team at World at Eight and Radio Britain. Wish you all an extremely hot, very happy and safe weekend.